when the prosecution erroneously concedes a speedy trial violation based upon a traffic infraction, can they later on move to reinstate the accusatory instrument? To find out, you have to read People versus Love It, but it's six pages. Don't have time for that? I've got you covered. This is TLDR, Too Long Didn't Read, where I cover New York Court of Appeals cases, and I try to do it in five minutes or less. This is the episode on the case of People versus Love It. The citation for this case is 2023, New York Slip Opinion 05348, published by the Court of Appeals on October 24th of 2023. The issue in this case is when the prosecution wrongfully, legally in error, concedes a speedy trial violation, can they later appeal to reinstate the accusatory instrument if, the, if a new decision affects uh, and clarifies that error? To, find, to, to appreciate what's going on in this case, uh, I have to explain just a few different things. The first is what appealability means. Um, under CPL 470.05, that describes uh, what kinds of cases can be appealed, and what gets appealed is, a, is, a, is an error of law. And under CPL 470.05, it says a question of law is appealable and presented that can be reviewable by an appellate court only when the error is protested at the same at the time of the ruling, and the error is the same error that's being protested at the time of the appeal by the party that was aggrieved by that error. So the party that's complaining at the appellate level cannot has to have raised this issue at the lower level. You have to say, I object, or somehow registered your protest with what's going on, and then later on you can be heard to appeal. That's 470.05, sub two. The other thing you have to understand a little bit about is what speedy trial is. Speedy trial is a statute, CPL 3030, that says that a motion to dismiss can be made by a defendant if the people or the prosecution is not ready for trial within a certain amount of time. And that time is different depending on what kind of uh, what kind of offenses the defendant is accused of. So if it's a felony, it's six months. If it's a misdemeanor charge that's punishable by by uh, three months or more, it's 90 days. If it's an offense, that's another level. And specifically, 3031E says that an offense includes VTL infractions, vehicle and traffic law infractions. And the last thing you have to know is that there was a case called People versus Galindo from last year from the Court of Appeals, where they said that cases that only involve traffic infractions, that cases that don't have any other misdemeanors or felonies involved, if it's only traffic infractions, then they are still not covered by the speedy trial statute. That's what Galindo said. They are still not covered by the speedy trial statute. Okay. With that background, what do we have here? The facts are the defendant is charged with a, with, a, with a simplified traffic information. So he's charged with only committing traffic infractions. So we now know that under Galindo, that is not covered by the speedy trial statute. But at the time this happened, which is pre-Galindo, the defendant made a motion to dismiss under CPL 3030. In court, the people conceded that they were bound by CPL 3030, and they conceded that it was a speedy trial violation. They were wrong. This was an incorrect statement of the law. So county court granted the motion to dismiss and dismissed the case. Afterwards, after that, temporally, the, county, the, the, Supreme, the, the Court of Appeals decided people versus Galindo and decided that, made it very clear, and issued that decision I talked about earlier, that cases that only involve simplified traffic informations, uh, traffic infractions, are still not covered by the speedy trial statute. The people then realized their error, that they shouldn't have dismissed this case, and they tried to appeal. They tried to say, reinstate the accusatory instrument because we were wrong. And that's what this case is. It goes to the majority, and they say, there's a majority in the dissent here, uh, six people in the majority and Judge Rivera alone in the dissent. The majority says, we can't, we can't review this case. Why can't we review the case for its merits? Because under CPL 470.05, the people did not object when the ruling happened. In fact, they were the ones that that said they they were the ones that conceded a speedy trial violation, because there was no uh, objection or protest when the error happened. They can't now be heard to complain about it. Uh, there was no change in the law, and they they say there's an exception when there's a change in the law. But here they say People versus Galindo didn't say we're changing the law. In fact, they reinforced that there's not a change in the law. They said there's still does not apply to speedy trial, uh, to, to traffic infractions alone, therefore indicating it's not a change in the law. Because there was no change in the law and the people did not object below, they can't be heard now to appeal. But there is a dissent by Judge Rivera alone, and here she says, the people in the court were wrong. Everyone was wrong when this 3030 
dismissal was granted. It was wrong. It was a legal error. And yes, the people did not raise the issue below, but they couldn't have, or they, they're not responsible for that error because we later clarified in People versus Galindo that it doesn't apply. So the people should be, we, should, we shouldn't, people should be allowed to raise this appeal to correct the error of law, even though they didn't raise it below because they were in error. And that's the case of uh, People versus Lovett. Once again, the majority holding is they can't be heard now because they didn't register an objection below. People versus Love It. Have a good day. If you like what you just saw and want to see more just like it, please hit like or subscribe to let me know. 